What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. What's good, everybody? And you're listening to the Ball Fake Podcast. Welcome back to another episode. This is now episode 29. If you're new to our YouTube channel or listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a nice little review. Say hashtag let's go viral in the comment section. Support our new movement and make sure you like and subscribe and share our videos and episodes with all you guys as friends. But as for today, we have a special video for you guys. But before we hop into that, I want to give a quick shout out to our subscriber today. Shout out Jawan Bacon. We really appreciate you liking and subscribing and turning on all our post notifications. But, you know, like I said, Judging by the title, you can see we're going to talk about LaMelo Ball being told that he was going to be drafted by the Golden State Warriors. Now, I mean, overall, it's a very funny, sticky type of situation. You know, yeah. obviously the Warriors last season, they had a pretty bad season. They looked like a shell of themselves. Um, they were easily one of the worst teams, if not the worst team in the NBA last season. And it if you ask me, it made sense for them to, you know, draft a guy like James Wiseman. When you look at the roster that they had last season, it was a bunch of no-name players. Can you name any <laughs> outside of Willie Colley Stein and Kevin Looney? Can you name anybody outside of Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Draymond Green, and those other guys that you know are notable names? You can't really do that for the most part. I mean, I mean, there's some guys that you know have names for themselves, but they they just aren't all that well offensively. Eric Pascal, you know, he he came out yeah. last season. What is he? I think he was a rookie last year. But, you know, he he made a bit of a name for himself, but it, it wasn't nothing too crazy. He just surprised people because nobody studies basketball and d deep dives like who these guys really are. But, I mean, I guess my point is I think it's kind of it's it's give or take. It is give or take. Judging by how LaMelo has been playing right now, the Warriors obviously... They look stupid. Yeah, they look stupid. They look a little <laughs> stupid. But I think... The notion that this is this is the perspective that I've been hearing. Most people say that, OK, when you're drafting in the lottery, you take you don't draft on needs. You draft on the best available player. And if you ask me, yes, that is true to an extent. But the Warriors, they're in a very they're in a much different situation than every than most teams that, you know, were in the lottery. They were they were a team that are dealing with injuries. Clay Thompson was out. Steph Curry was out. Draymond Green had to sit. Your roster was depleted. Yeah. So with that being said, it's not like they were a team that was in rebuild mode. If you're a team that's in rebuild mode, that's when I feel like, yes, take the best available play. Mm -hmm. But since, you know, they're a playoff team and they're trying to, you know, contend for a title, I think it make I think it made more sense for the Warriors in that state of state and moment for them to draft James Wiseman. Yeah, and you got to look back at the, the Warriors teams that were contending for championships. They never had like a good elite front court. So getting a guy like Wiseman and coming in where you could plug him in right away, who's going to at least give you 10 and ten and 6 rebounds, kind of like what he's doing right now. I mean, it's not a bad pickup. Right. But the fact that they lied to LaMelo, that's kind of like the big story. Like, we're going to pick you and you don't pick, especially from a great organization. That's, that's the most surprising to me is that a, a good organization – good gm and they don't and they don't pick the guy that they wanted to and i think i mean and i, I think Lamelo. to be honest bro my concern with Lamelo going at, to golden state was typically rookies are not gonna it, they're gonna their their growth is gonna be stunted a little bit if they're going in situations where you have to win now and i think that's something that you know james wiseman is obviously experiencing mm-hmm but once again, this is a, this is one thing I want to put out there that I don't think enough people are touching bases on. And it's the fact that LaMelo Ball only played 11 games last year. Heading into, heading into you know, his NBA career, heading into the draft and everything, he only played 11 games in Australia. He was hurt the rest of the season. And with that small margin of play, I'm not saying that we all know LaMelo has tremend, uh, tremendous upside and potential. And that's what you draft off. Of. But once again, it kind of correlates with uh, what I was saying, Golden State was in win now mode. We don't know if LaMelo would have came in and, you know, just produced right away. Now we can kind of get an idea of, you know, what he would have done. But I mean, obviously it's too late. Yeah. And then on exactly. top of that, what was one of Melo's biggest knocks in this game? His inefficiency. Yeah. And I think that that I if you ask me, I think that was another thing that, you know, kind of it didn't necessarily play all that much of a role in in 
them selecting Wiseman, I think it was just more so the fact that they just needed a big. Like, it was just as yeah, simple yeah. as that. Now, I'm not saying that the Warriors are necessarily wrong for taking Wiseman or they're wrong for lying to LaMelo, but I'm just looking at it. I'm being objective and looking at it from both sides. But I think, I think, I think it's funny how, like, people really struggle to do that. But I don't know, man. I mean, what what's I your take like on this entire situation? Yeah, I feel like we have to people have to understand that the draft is just hard in general. So trying to figure out how these guys are going to pan out, how they're going to pan out in your system, what their potential is going to be in five five to ten years is very tough. Like like you said, Lamelo only playing eleven games, uh, Wiseman only playing really one or two games before he said I'm I'm uh, before he got suspended by NCAA. Yeah, I, I think I mean, he played wasn't three. Like, yeah, it wasn't a lot of sample size even on him. So, I mean, that spot that they were in was very tough. I knew they weren't going to trade it because I knew they, they could definitely get a guy like a Wiseman or LaMelo, but we can only do what-if predictions now. I mean, if LaMelo would have been on their team, definitely right now the Warriors definitely need a secondary secondary ball handle. I mean, yesterday, Steph, Steph looked – he looked irritated. He looked pissed in, the, pissed in that huddle. After, after a timeout, they were getting blown out by 26, just trying to get these guys put that get clip, some energy. Let's put that clip in here too, man. I, yeah, I thought yeah, that yeah, was yeah. funny. Yeah, well, it was funny. He's trying to get energy out of these guys, and they're just looking at him, just looking up to him like, yeah, bro, we don't care. Like, he's just... I wouldn't say all that. I wouldn't say all that, but I did. It was, I think what I will say is, and I don't mean to cut you up, I think that no, it, no, you're good. I think it's funny that, like, I think I actually commented under one of those videos that I was like, man, if this was LeBron James, everybody would be calling him a bad teammate. Exactly. But since it's Steph Curry, everybody's just like, oh man, Steph's frustrated. Like, like just a, let's just flash back real quick to what year was it? I believe it was the 2018 or 2019 NBA Finals. It was the 2018 NBA Finals when J.R. Smith literally loses his freaking mind, bro. <laughs> exactly. And runs out the rest of the exactly. clock knowing that damn well that the game is tied. Not knowing that the game is tied. And people get onto LeBron James about losing his shit for that. Like that was a valid moment to get to lose your shit over. Right. Like I, I just thought that was funny. But I mean, yeah. I think one. Wh but going back to my point. Yeah, yeah. Like, go yeah, ahead. Like, go like, ahead. Like, a, like right now, like they definitely need a guy like Lamelo, who's since he's been named a starter and now he's a starter for the rest of the year, averaged twenty points, six and six, forty six percent for the field, field forty three percent for the three point line, eighty six percent for the free throw line. So this guy is he's like he playmaking. He can score. He's getting to his right spots. He's developing and and getting better at his decision making definitely something that the Warriors definitely need right now but I mean they didn't know that five or six months ago so I mean it's kind of hard like I said the draft is very hard people just need to understand that and they a lot of teams this in this draft pick on their needs and sometimes that's what you have to do and I don't I think James Wiseman is gonna he's gonna pan out for them but it's just win um yeah I mean we'll we'll just have to wait and see for that see. we'll have to wait and see but I, I do think there's one thing that you know people don't know about this entire situation and it's the fact that one one person from Lamelo ball's team leaked the information to jalen rose and that person was actually jermaine jackson i don't know if people know that but yeah it was jermaine jackson uh wow. aka his high school coach and now his manager he was the person that leaked out this you know information to jalen rose and it's because you know they're they're actually good friends off the basketball court you know they're former nba players um on top of that, you know, there are two guys raised in Detroit, Michigan. They're from the area. So I'm guessing that they have ties from that. But yeah, Jermaine Jackson was actually the one to, you know, leak that information if you guys didn't know. But Interesting. yeah, I mean, I think my last point that I kind of want to make is, or at least my last question is, how do you think LaMelo would have been played? Like, how, how do you think Golden State would have tried to utilize him? Because if you ask me, Obviously. I think um, they probably I mean, put him in like, some pick and roll obviously pick and roll off ball yeah. pin downs and everything and get him in some like corn sets and everything but what what do you think yeah kind of like the situation that he's in now coming off the bench with two guards in front of him Devontae Devontae Graham and uh Terry Rozier just kind of like bring him in slowly learn from Steph Curry and like you said pick and roll situations maybe they maybe they push the pace a little bit but yeah that's pretty much it like yeah, he definitely would have helped out Steph tremendously. Him and Steph would I, I couldn't even imagine how crazy they would have been together. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm sure that he would have got some minutes with the starters at some point in the season after yeah. maybe like what 10, 14 games into the season. And I'm really curious as to like how well he would gel with 
Draymond, Steph, and you know, Clay Thompson when he gets back on the court. But that's something that we'll obviously never know because he's in Charlotte. But let us know what you guys think in the comment section about this entire situation. Do you think the Golden State Warriors should have drafted LaMelo Ball? Or do you, do you agree with them drafting James Wiseman? But outside of that, it's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. And we out. We out.